Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to this week's video. Today I figured it was time for an update about my current favorite watercolors or brands of watercolors. Just like last time, this is going to be based on the watercolors I have been drawn to and using the most during the past year or so. So let's jump right into it. The watercolors in my number three spot are these Isaro watercolors from Belgium. I will leave a link in the card and in the description if you're interested in my full review slash kind of first impressions on these watercolors. You can also see in that video my setting up of this little palette that I have here. These watercolors have been so fun to experiment with and I've actually been itching lately to expand the number of colors that I have just because I've been enjoying them so much. It's a little weird to include this one in my top three favorites currently because I've really only painted one large painting with these watercolors, which is this one, Regent, and it's actually my favorite painting that I did in 2020. Because I haven't done a ton of like completed artwork with these paints, I decided that this would be a good one to feature an actual painting for in this video as I don't have a ton of examples to show you. So this is going to be the only brand in this video for which I will be showing like the actual process. But I'm pretty sure I have videos of me working with the other two brands. And even though I've done so little with my Asara watercolors, I couldn't help but include them in this list because I found them to be immediately captivating. The things that drew me to specific brands of watercolor in this past year are very similar to what it's been in the past, but it has shifted a little bit. So I guess we'll talk about the baseline for what I'm looking for in my watercolors these days. I want them to be reliable, which we've talked about in the past. I want to I want to be able to pick up the palette and to know what to expect from the paints. I want to know that they're going to play well together and that I'm going to be able to get the color mixes that I want from the colors that I have. So these definitely check that box. The paints are also of such a nice quality. They layer and glaze so nicely and they're such a joy to use. And I think what makes this particular brand of watercolors unique on their own lies with some of the unique properties of the individual colors. I think I may have said this when I reviewed these paints initially, but each individual color feels like it was crafted specifically and with individual care to really bring the most out of each individual pigment. I would say of the three brands of watercolors on this list, the Asara watercolors are probably the ones that will flow and spread the most in water, so they have a really nice flow to them, and this can sometimes lead to slightly more even washes when you're covering a large area because that pigment will disperse a little bit more. I noticed while working on this painting that as the colors dried, they tended to lose a little bit of saturation as they were drying. So there were some areas where I went over the same section with multiple layers because the red in particular was losing quite a bit of vibrancy. And while sometimes that's not what I'm looking for, when I want subtlety and slight variations in color from one, from one wash or layer to the next, these are just really fun to use.
after my Asara watercolors comes the top two spots, and both of the paints for those two spots are in these White Knights palettes. They're not both White Knights paints, but one of them is number two, one of them is number one. Which is it gonna be? Which one's number two? Which one's number- oh look, in the number two slot are my White Knights paints. I know, crazy, right? They were in the number one slot last time. I know, this is so weird. It's like some um, dramatic reality TV show, but it's just, it's just watercolors. Even just opening up this palette and looking at these paints makes me so happy. It feels like a comfy place, like that cozy corner of your house where you go to sit down with a cup of tea or a good book and you just know that the experiences you have in that space are going to be comfy. I even got uh, some tubes of my three favorite colors, Cadmium Red Light, Naples Yellow, and Indigo from White Nights so that I could refill the full pans that I have. And these are just some of my favorites slash recent pieces I've done with my White Nights watercolors. And these are just such a staple for me. They're just a go-to brand where I know what to expect. I love the quality of the paints. I would say that this brand varies from the other paints on this list because there is, generally speaking, far less granulation to the White Nights watercolors, in particular the colors that I have here. The colors I'm featuring in this little color wheel are not my three favorite colors. It's Naples Yellow, maybe like a ruby red, something a little bit cooler than the Cadmium Red Light, and then some sort of turquoise color. I'm sorry, I don't... I'll leave the pigment information for these colors in the description, but I'm not sure what the specific color names are for these three colors. What makes the White Knights unique for me, one is the palette. It's my favorite watercolor palette. I love the large wells. I love the full pans. It makes it so easy for me to use my calligraphy brushes, but also the paints have a bit of heaviness to them almost. They're, they're, they're very vibrant. There's so much saturation available um, with the White Knights paints, and they have so much body to them. Like, I don't want to say gumminess or opacity, but it, it, is, it is kind of those sorts of things. They just feel so present and so bold when using the White Knights watercolors, and at the same time, you can dilute them down to something softer, but they don't have the... So when I say lightness, I don't mean lack of saturation with the other watercolors, but they just aren't as floaty, if that makes sense, or as transparent as other brands, and I've come to really love that about them. I suppose that leaves only the number one slot, and if you haven't guessed it or figured it out yet, if you haven't seen the video for these, these are my Roman small watercolors. Again, there's a video for the assembly of this palette as well as my first impressions as well, and I've been painting with these paints a lot lately. They've been the ones I've been reaching for the most, and some of the things that I love about them, of course there's going to be overlap with the White Knights paints in that I have full pans and I literally have them in a White Knights palette, so that makes them very enjoyable for me to use as far as functionality. What makes these paints different from the White Knights, for example, is that where the White Knights have a lot of body and a lot of presence, these paints are more transparent, kind of, and they have this sort of light, floaty, that's not a good word to describe paints, but this um, sort of, okay, this is going to sound really weird, like sort of this like ethereal, beautiful uh, presence to them. Is that making it? I'm just, it's like every year when I make these videos about my favorite watercolors, it becomes more abstract in the descriptions of what I like about them and becomes more and more about intuition and feeling and um, emotional <laughs> attachment <laughs> to watercolors. Um, I love these paints. I, I, I'm sorry that this is not like a um, concise technical review of watercolors 
and I, I know I said the same thing last year, where it's more based on just, hey, I really like this thing. So here's a thing that I really like. You could check out uh, separate videos for, I believe, all three of these paints, all three of these brands of watercolors in the description, but the Roman Spa wa watercolors have just been serving me so well, and I love layering with them and glazing. The colors don't lose a lot of vibrancy as they dry, and just, it's, they're just, it's such a joy to lay one color over top of another, particularly with glazing. It's so rewarding to build up layers and to see the individual washes. There's some beautiful granulating neutral mixes, like some of the pre-made colors available, and it, they're just captivating and mesmerizing and beautiful. Oh boy. <laughs> so I hope that that's helpful. This is really just a providing of my opinions about watercolors in the past year. The painting that I made with my Asaro watercolors will be featured as the Patreon postcard for the month of April. I can't believe it's almost April already. So if you would like to receive a postcard of this painting, you can sign up over on Patreon before April 1st. I will also have the original for sale on my shop. Thank you so much to all of my patrons and my members on YouTube. You guys are amazing and I appreciate all of your support. Leave a comment below this video and let me know if you've tried any of these three brands, or if you have a different trio of favorites as far as brands of watercolors, the ones that you gravitate towards the most, and what draws you to them. I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for um, nerding out about paints with me for a little while. I hope you're all doing well, and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>